Cool. It's great to see so many of you here. Welcome to uh, what is, uh, well, I would probably say the most anticipated day of the year uh, in 2014, which is the second annual iCrossing Display Day. Um, so it's fabulous to see so many of you here. Anyone who was here last year? Anyone? That's, that's a shame because I've got exactly the same presentation to start. Um, but try not to share what I'm about to say. So um, we've got a great day coming up. Um, we f should finish by about half one, two-ish, I believe. So there should be some opportunity to get some sandwiches and that sort of thing and some networking. So do take advantage of that. Um, I need to do some housekeeping. So the toilets are outside. Um, I believe you might need a pass to get through. That's not a pass from me. That's a Google pass because there's an actual kind of security gate. So if you do go during the presentations, it might be a bit tricky. During the breaks, there should be someone stood on the door. Um, fire exits are in the corners. If there is a fire, um, I'm going to be as panicky as you are, so I'll be following Jess from DoubleClick. So fingers crossed, just, just go there. Um, this little pad here represents the bags that are on your uh, chairs. So if you're an eye crosser and you have a bag, please put it down. But if you're not an eye crosser and you don't have a bag, we'll, we'll sort you out a bag at the end. But please take, take your bags, have a look in them. This is a, the classic marketing tat that you're going to get from any agency event. But this year, I would say that the tat is particularly good. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Someone asked me before, I can't remember who it was, but 9 out of 10 for this year's tat. There is a very important document in there, which is this. Can everyone get that? You'll also need a pen. Can everyone wave them in the air? Okay, so this is our buzzword bingo of the day, okay? So I need you to concentrate hard and mark off each buzzword you hear as and when the presenter um, says it. I, I kind of worried that it might be done before I finish my introduction, but we'll see. Um, the winner, the first person who gets a full house will win a lovely prize, which is a Google Chromecast. If you get that full house, I want you to stand up and shout bingo. Okay, it doesn't matter if anyone's presenting, they'll be fine. They might be a little bit put off, but I'll be done by then, I hope. So it should be fine. As with any, uh, any kind of successful event like this, you have to have a hashtag. It's super important that you have a hashtag. And this year, our hashtag is uh, IX Display. Now, I have to do segues between every presentation, right? And it's very difficult to come up with an anecdote or a joke in between whilst I'm also kind of trying to listen to presentations. So I'm asking you all to be very helpful to me this year and make sure that you can tweet your thoughts on the presenter, any questions, and then when I come back up, I can start to read out your tweets. So please, 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 please use the hashtag. Okay, iCrosses, you have to use the hashtag, but clients, please use the hashtag. I'll be very happy. Coffee, you should have had coffee. Um, you're going to need to be very awake and engaged. There's going to be some interaction. I think there's going to be some videos. Um, we will be having a coffee break a little later as well, so if you start to get tired, don't worry. Um, so the eagle-eyed amongst you would have noticed that alongside your um, invitation, there was an opportunity to respond to a survey as well. Um, now, we wanted to have a survey this year because it's really important for us to kind of find out what's important to you and help shape uh, some of the content of, uh, for some of the speakers that you're going to see today. And we're really thankful that you have responded in your numbers to that. So I'm going to ask Loretta Wood, who's our senior biddable display analyst, to come up on stage. I'm sure many of you will know Loretta, to talk us through some of the results. Oh. Hello. <laughs> so our first question that we asked was, what do, you use, what do you see as the objective of your display marketing? And this is quite a hard question to ask because it encompasses quite a lot of um, answers. So we listed our top three considerations, which were that we showed that 15% of our respondents use display to influence consideration. 31 to build brand awareness, and 54 use display as direct response, which is great because this is something that we also believe in at iCrossing. Secondly, we asked, what role within your business do you currently use paid social for? Now, of all the popular social platforms out there, over 60% of them responded with Facebook, and over 60% also use this for branding activity, which is interesting, and I think it'll be interesting to see how the Facebook advertising space evolves over time to become a direct response channel, which, is, um, which we mostly see display used as. We then asked, how are you integrating your display advertising with marketing channels? 
42% on, said on-site content, another 42 said paid search. And what's interesting about paid search is this is something that we use as best practice within iCrossing. It's important that you, um, you integrate your paid search with display because it allows opportunities for you to share data and insights, such as audience lists and keyword lists, for example. And following that, 8% said social media and also 8% said email. And what's interesting about these platforms is that use, um, it allows you to see user intent, so it allows marketeers to integrate with users more closely because intent is more explicit on these platforms. We then ask, what barriers do you currently face when running your display activity? The most common um, response we got here is attribution and budget. Attribution is something that we commonly see across um, display activity uh, as something that's very difficult that all marketers challenge. However, when you do get attribution right and you are able to accurately attribute your display activity, it allows for better measurement and it allows you to unlock the value of display and the cross-channel impact it can have across your marketing channels. And then finally, we asked, how much are you currently spending on your display advertising? 60% are spending less than 100K annually. And of the 60%, 87% intend to increase this over the next six months, which is something that we, of course, are very glad to hear. Yeah. Um, that means we'll get the room again next year, I think, if we can increase that. Um, thank you, Loretta. Um, so we've taken this data as well as some um, other insights that we believe are valuable, and we've kind of fed this into our planning. Um, so you should have an agenda in your uh, packs as well, but don't worry because I'm going to talk you through it. So we're, we're split into two sessions today. Um, the morning session, well, the early morning session, uh, we're going to be looking at managing your data. So Lucia from DoubleClick is going to um, talk to us about how you can incorporate that ac again um, across channel. Um, and then following that, we've got Stephen Edwards from Hearst, who uh, are one of the largest um, independent media owners in the world and also our parent company. So um, it's very nice for them to join us, and they'll be talking to you about how, um, in a world where we're seeing content display and programmatic and kind of performance display come together, how a company like Hearst um, is dealing with that. Then we've got coffee, um, and then the second uh, um, session where we're looking at some paid social, where we'll have Sean uh, and James come from our media team and talk through some tips how to be successful there. Um, at 11.30, we have a joint case study with uh, Jamie Bodkin, and Oliver Hughes, um, Jamie Bokin is uh, from our Reed client, um, and they broke, broke YouTube records, um, so there's some fantastic videos within that and some tips on how you can use um, YouTube uh, to drive brand awareness and engagement. And then finally, um, we're going to have Max McIntosh from Google join us uh, to talk about the, the huge opportunity that exists in a mobile display and how we can take advantage of that. We will have a panel at the end. Um, so if there are burning questions, try and save them for that. But if there are any specific ones, I will, I will kind of take those uh, in between each one. And then we have the fun bit of networking and refreshments. Um, so before I kind of hand over to the, kind of the headline apps for the day, I'm going to just indulge you with my, my own slides um, and try and kind of look at what's happened over the last 12 months. And, you know, I stood up here last year and we, we had the first display day. And what was super important, and it's not Glastonbury, but it was all about audience. Um, it was all about uh, looking beyond the world of Google Display and what sits beyond that and what inventory you can reach. Um, programmatic was driving online growth. Um, and on that, RTB was, was the biggest driver of it, so real-time bidding. We got excited about lots of different YouTube videos. Um, attribution, it's always a problem. Um, I think it's been a problem for the last five years. We talked about that, and we also looked at how technology um, can help create or, or develop some creative solutions uh, at scale. And so this year, what's important, what, what's changed in the last 12 months, what's everyone talking about, what is driving the agenda today? Well, I went to Thailand a little while ago, and to be honest, this phrase summed it up for me. It's the same, same, but it's a little bit different, because I think sometimes we may be, well, now we're a little bit more confident, we're a little bit bolshier. Some of the techno technological developments have improved, but still, um, we have some of the same challenges. So it's interesting that it is going in the right direction, but perhaps not as quickly as some might like. But let's look at some stats. So this is taken from an agency, um, and it was published in eMarketer, looking at uh, forecasted spend growth in the programmatic space. Um, so what you can see here, this is US data, but from 2013 to 2014, so just when I was stood up here last year, we still saw 30% growth 
in programmatic spend, which is significant, it's going to start to slow down to about 27%, but still, that's phenomenal, right? That, that's significant growth. Now, what's interesting is now agencies are eternally optimistic. I know. I work at an agency. I am eternally optimistic. I'm very excited. What they're also forecasting is that when you start to look at um, programmatic beyond real-time bidding, so this is where you buy display through a technology platform, but rather than bid for every impression, which is really driving the performance area, but you have an agreed set rate with a particular publisher, and you just buy, transact through that rather than phoning someone up, getting a gin and tonic, going for lunch, and then sending them over an I.O., all of that. If you start to account for that, actually what it's saying is that we're above 50% already, and that we will be at 83% by 2017. Now, I think that's pretty bold. Um, I would love to see that, um, because it would, in order for us to do that, we would have to use programmatic and platforms such as DoubleClip across not just display, but various other areas. But I think that's a bit bold. I think this is probably a bit closer, um, where we're still seeing RTB at about 30%, and probably um, programmatic um, direct at about 20%. So I think it's somewhere in the middle. It depends. If you want an internal optimist, go to an agency. If you want um, something a little bit more realistic, go to um, uh, an independent body. Um, so what else has happened in 2014? So every kind of presentation typically says this is the year of the mobile, this is um, uh, the year mobile one for me. And I think that's, that really rings true with some of the um, results that we're seeing for our clients in the search and display space where actually you may find that um, your uh, desktop searches are now fewer than your mobile searches. And this causes a huge, huge headache for many brands because brands and the, uh, aren't really set up for registering the value of this. Um, your uh, stores, if you have stores, aren't really integrated with your um, e-commerce and your online. So there's, there's huge, huge challenges with that. With that. Um, and this is for me. So anyone who knows me will know that I have been predicting that we'll be buying TV um, within the next two years for the last five years. Um, but we're kind of almost there. I don't know. We'll see. But I would say that TV is on the ropes, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Um, so this is taken from... Um, uh, Millwood Brown, um, and they ran this survey in the first half, or they published this survey in the first half of this year, um, and it looks at screen usage and media, media consumption across the world. Now, this is looking at it from a global perspective, and if you add this up, has anyone added this up yet? Bloody hell. I'll tell you, I've, I've just done it. It's seven, just under seven hours. That's how quick I am. Um, when you look at it that way, actually what you see is that globally, the smartphone now accounts for the single biggest usage or single biggest consumption device uh, for media. So you're looking at what's that? 35% of the seven hours, 147 minutes a day. Now you add tablet to that, you're looking at about 50%, 47%. Now that's a huge, huge opportunity and a huge, huge challenge. Interestingly, the UK is not quite like this yet because this is obviously driven by Asia, the developing world, where actually the internet connections are much more mobile. But the UK still has an obsession with TV. Um, and TV is still the single biggest consumption point for media. Now, this is um, looking at media spend by the same devices. So at the top, you can see that we've got the uh, split um, of daily consumption. 2013, 60% of all media spend was on TV, um, which is huge. Um, 2016, 60%. So that's not, it's not forecasted to change. 4% um, of media spend in 2013 globally was on mobile, despite... 50% of media consumption. So there's a huge, huge opportunity really there to um, engage your audiences uh, uh, in a way which is actually could be quite efficient before everyone starts to shift it. It's still not predicted to grow beyond 12%, which I think is interesting. Um, E-consultancy, they asked uh, their readers... Um, what do they ask? They asked, agree or disagree? More than 50% of our digital visitors will be via mobile by 2015. 60% agreed. Um, show of hands, who agrees or disagrees with that? Agree? Disagree? Okay, look at that. Brilliant. Great, you're on my side. Cool. This is, where, this is why I say TV's on the ropes. So mass reach TV ads won't be an effective tactic within five years. Agree, 49%. Yes, brilliant. That's fantastic because actually I, I completely agree. I think there are much better ways to do that. So... The key to being successful here, this is my kind of uh, Glastonbury, wishing, to be, wishing this was Glastonbury slide. The key here is really the audience, because it's the audience that can link people across devices 
um, across channels. And when you do that, I get really excited. I am, I am, look, I'm really excited. I am super, super excited. Who's excited? Put your hand up if you're excited. Okay. Good. You are excited. This is why I'm excited, because all of the problems, all of the challenges of buying media through a channel or buying media by device they're gone, they're, or they can be gone if you choose to approach it in a certain way, if you choose to integrate it, if you choose to look beyond the traditional relationships and forms that you may have established over the years. Um, we're doing this right now, so who's heard of RLSA? You're checking your bingo cards. Okay, so that RLSA was introduced last year. It's a remarketing list for search. Okay, what that, do, what that did essentially was the first time you were able to bring actual data into the search auction rather than just the keyword you're buying, right? So you can, you know, imagine a display where you, you, someone comes to your website, you remarket off of them, and then you show them an ad. It's the same thing for search. And so you're starting to then, you're starting to understand whether they are a previous customer or not, whether they've bought from you or not, and you're starting to then have one approach, one strategy, one platform across display because you can share the list between display and paid search. Across video, because you can also do it for YouTube, you can remarket off of videos in YouTube into search and start to understand um, the impact of YouTube on search uplift and obviously in search. So I'm excited. Okay, you're going to get more excited now because I'm about to reintroduce uh, a product that was launched by iCross in, I think, just uh, 10 days ago, 10 days ago about that, which is called Search AI. Has anyone heard of this? Has anyone seen the press release for this? Good, I'm introducing it then. Fantastic. That's much better. So. I believe that this is a, a milestone in search, um, but I'll let you be the judges of that. So this is a representation of a flux capacitor from, uh, from Back to the Future. Essentially, this is what I'm going to... I'm gonna, now going to explain to you what um, search AI is. So this is a proprietary uh, technology that iCrossing have, and we're the first agency to be able to bring this to our clients. We are now able to blend the remarketing lists that you can use um, in, in search which will indicate the types of behavior that your clients, um, that your customers, sorry, uh, do on your site, so whether they've bought, whether they visited a certain product page, et cetera. And we are able to draw in um, audience personas from uh, our parent company's Hearst data management platform. So this is going to be things such as income data. It's going to be um, demographic data. It's going to be location data, interest data, all of the types of stuff that you may be familiar with when buying um, display media. And we are then able to tailor them back together. So RLSA just on your site is quite dumb. It just knows that you have done something on a particular website. Search AI also knows so much more about you. So you can start to fill in the gaps and start to be um, super targeted in a, a non-personally identifiable way, of course. Now, that's cool. But the problem with that is that RLSA only works if they've come to your website. And typically, we see a variance of, I don't know, probably between 1% and 15% of traffic can be um, used for an RLSA list. Okay, so if, you're, if your traffic is quite small, then that means it's quite difficult to use that to scale out. So what's super exciting is what we're working on. Now, this isn't available now, but it will be available as it's developed, which is an extended integration with Hearst, which will be enabling us to... Um, bring that data straight in and not need to worry about the user coming to the site. So when someone has been to a Hearst site, we are able to understand who that person is, and we are then able to um, buy those people within the search space. So this is super exciting because now you don't need to um, just remarket your own customers. You can actually start to have a much deeper insight into customers that haven't been to your website yet. So I'm going to ask the question again. Now who's excited? Come on, that's really exciting. All right, okay, I'll have another go. Okay, look at this image. This was not done by our creative team. Okay, look at the size of that iPad, it's ridiculous. Um, but what this is trying to represent is that actually when we're watching TV now, we have different screens, right? We have separate screens. Now, this whole concept of second screen is quite interesting because we use it in different ways, don't we? So sometimes you're using it to build on the viewing of the TV program. So you might be consuming content about that. In other times, you're just not even watching it and you're tweeting because it's Britain's Next Cup model and I really don't care about that, so I'm just doing something else or, you know, Julie's tweeting whilst I'm watching the football. But needless to say, we always have that second screen. So another thing that's actually happening now 
we're running for some of our clients, and I know we're about to launch for some of our clients, um, is the ability to integrate what's going on with TV with your online display buy. So there is a technology that integrates with DoubleClick that we use, which enables us to understand what is being played, whether it's an advert or a program, and then we're able to bring that directly into the buying platform and either upweight, downweight, or change our display ads. So you can imagine a world where your competitor is advertising on TV, and you may wish to then upweight all of your ads across social media and display to counteract that. You could also imagine a world where your ad is on TV, and you may want to amplify that across social media and display. Or it could be a TV program. So it could be a program that is uh, fits your demographic that you want to bring in and upweight. So I'm going to ask the question again. Who's excited about that? That's really, really exciting. Come on. OK. This is, this is, this is, going, to make, this is going to make my prediction of buying TV uh, come true. Because the Google Chromecast, which hopefully someone's quite close to winning, um, if, they've got their, if they've, they've been concentrating on their bingo card, the Google Chromecast is going to help push the momentum of TVs connected to the internet much further and much quicker. And once you've got that, once you've got all of the TVs connected into the internet, there is no reason why the TV transactions can't be done for a platform like DoubleClick. There's no reason why you need to separate that from your YouTube buy. There's no reason why that doesn't feed into search. Okay, you don't need to have a, a separate process, a separate branding agency, a separate branding team. It can all be one because it's all about audience. And that's where we can help. Okay, it's a shameless plug. So who's excited about that? Thank you. Good. I always like to uh, consult one of, my, uh, one of my inspirations in life, uh, which is Del Boyd Trotter, where his, his eternal optimism, which is this time next year, Rodders, this time next year. Well, this time next year, we might be buying TV, digital, outdoor, interactive, radio, anything else that can actually be plugged into the system because there's absolutely no reason why, um, alongside what we're already doing. So hopefully... I'll be stood up here in 2016 saying that we've got lots of different clients buying all of those things through us. Um, uh, we'll see. 